morning and welcome to the Charles Ian Persico Rugby and Sports Show brought to you by Wired It Up a Bush Live on Facebook. I'm Anton Persico and this is Mark Childs. Childsy, how are you today? Oh, I'm really, really good this morning on this beautiful Wired It Up a frosty morning. Um, we've got an exciting show planned today. Persico, our guest speakers, James Goodyear from the Maris Rugby Club, uh, Dion Mitchell, Dion Rat Mitchell from out there at East Coast and Robbie Chuka Anderson from Ikatahuna. So um, we'll welcome those guys into the show as we go along. Cool. Now, I just want to give a little shout out to um, McDonald's Masterton. McDonald's Masterton have given us 40 Big Mac vouchers. So, Charles, he's been on the Big Macs and Quarter Pounders all week, as you can tell. And um, if you leave a nice comment below, a nice comment below and like this page, we'll make sure that we get some Big Mac combos out to you. Charles, I believe you want to give a little shout out to or spread a bit of love in the rugby union. Yes, now we're going to kick the show off um, by acknowledging all the women in our local rugby clubs and our sporting scene here. So from a Greytown perspective, uh, Jenna Tafari, our club president, does an amazing job there at Greytown. Uh, Kylie Evans gets through a hell of a lot of work as well, along with Henetoka Isaac. So um, a yeah, big shout out to those three ladies for their, their work and effort in the Greytown club. And uh, you've got some more ladies you want yeah, to Yeah, I do. I spent a little bit of time out at the Marty Club last year, and I want to give a big shout out to Rachel Colton, the club president. Um, she does an amazing job out there, and she's got great support by uh, Nadia White, also Louise Henderson, and Caitlin Russell, who's instrumental in the JABs. So well done, ladies. Yeah, very own Wadda Bush Union with Trish Hemmings and Stacey Putty there as well, um, who do a fantastic job. So, yeah, big shout out to all the women in rugby. Yeah, I've also got to add Michelle Beaver from Maris. I remember when I was five years old playing for the Mighty Maris Midgets. Um, Michelle always used to make sure that there was a Savaloy or something there ready for us at the end of the game as well. So thank you so much, Michelle. Now, we would we would have missed a lot of people that needed a shout-out. So if we have, please put them in the comments below. They do deserve the recognition uh, for all the work that they get as well. So uh, moving along, we want to talk about the new Wide Upper Bush What About You campaign. Me and Charles, you've got the T-shirts on. Uh, the What About You campaign is about the responsible drinking of alcohol. It's about watching out for your mates. And um, what you'll see around the clubs this year is these T-shirts, also some of these posters around the place. So uh, drink zero, be a hero. Um, it's okay to say no, Charlesy. All right, make sure you refuel for a good time. And I drink sober, what about you? So that's the What About You campaign. And it's about looking after your mates. So this week I've gone and done something special for my mate here, Mark Childs. Uh, I've released our first product to the show, the Persico, uh, the Charles Ian Persico show. This product's going to be available on the streets of Greytown next week. This is the Mark Childs Triple Chin Signature Face Mask. Goes like this. You can be <laughs> like Charlesy. So pre-sales of this product have been fantastic. Uh, I believe Gladstone Rugby Club put ten of them on their on their uh, tackling bags this week. Wide Upper Boxing Association put them all over their punching bags and the Wide Upper Darts Association had them all over the darts boards. So, Charles, you're a popular bloke. If I see you wearing one of these at one of the Greytown home games, I'll give you a Big Mac combo. There you go. What do you think, Charles? Oh, I think it's amazing. Yeah, really, really flattered. <laughs> well done, um, Mr. Cody. Yeah. So, moving along to the Moose Carpenty Cup uh, results from last weekend. The first game we're going to cover is Carterton versus Marist. And we have James Goodger on the show to uh, talk to us about that match. James, can you hear us? Kia ora, guys. Hey, mate. How are you today? I'm really good, thanks, mate. Pleasure to be on the show. Yeah, cool. I, uh, Maris get up um, by the skin of their teeth, I see, 16-15. Um, Charles, he's got a few questions for you about the game and also yourself as well. Well, firstly, James, uh, kia ora, bro. Uh, how's the shoulder? Yeah, it's good. It's coming along uh, nicely. Um, recovering, it recovered really fast. So uh, I'm looking back to get uh, get back on the field next weekend. Okay, I read Coggy's uh, article this morning in the in the local rag, and he, he did mention you might be playing on tomorrow, but that's obviously not the case. No, nah, I told him a few fibs actually. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. <laughs> um, but you yeah, look the the word out of the Maris um, Club and, and and north of the bridge is um, is good numbers there this season and. Um, yeah, if you're listening to people north of the bridge, um, you're clear favourites to take out the title. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I think the good thing about us this year is that we've got really good numbers. So, um, you know, that creates really good competition within, within each other and um, makes it hard for the coaches to pick that starting 15 and 22. So, um, and that's a really good position to be in. Absolutely. Now, one of your players I'm very fond of, I used to coach him out at Rathkill in, in Colts days, is a guy called Jeremiah Mapasua. 
Now, tell me, is he still around? He's still around, Charlesy. He's uh, he's an up and comer, uh, as you know. Um, he played for the Bush a few years ago. Um, unfortunately, he, uh, yeah, he he was playing up uh, playing up last year quite a bit and uh, missed out on the Bush selection. But um, he's really put the effort in this year. I'll tell you what: if you if your back three want to learn how to catch a ball properly, you get Jeremiah Mapasua to put up a bomb because it could go absolutely anywhere. So I mean, <laughs> if you can get one of his kicks. You're going to be good funny how a lot of these front, front rowers um, rate, really rate themselves as, <laughs> as goal kickers and drop goal specialists. We've got a couple at Greytown as well. Uh, Lewis Bush is one of them. So, yeah, look, um, who are some of the other players, James, to watch out for this season? I think the the uh, the um, Alan Malatai and some of the young followers up in Kimmers, um, pretty young. Uh, we all know Solly. He's pretty electric with ball, so uh, he's one to watch. Um, and I think um, the the quiet man in the midfield there, Chris Matthews, he's uh, he, he's pretty quiet, but he's um, he, he does the work and uh, he's deceptively fast. Um, yeah, and I think we've just got a good all round team with some old players and some young players as well. Yeah, cool. Hey, on the game last week, good you? Um, look, you were up sixteen eight with ten minutes to go. Uh, one more try would have sort of put the nail in the coffin for Cardinal, but then a sort of couple of yellow cards came about. Um, tell us about one of the yellow cards. I believe it was for not wearing a mouth guard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the, the new rule state, you've got to have a mouth guard or, uh, or, or you get off the field, you know. So, um, unfortunately, one of the lads didn't have a mouth guard and um, had a bit of a mozza. Um, so he's, he's got a lot of making up to do. So, uh, and I'm sure he will, uh, which put us under a bit of, a bit of pressure. Um, and, and thankfully, we were able to hold them out. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks, James. Um, it's great to uh, talk to you this morning, and everyone can't wait to see you back on the rugby field um, sooner rather than later. So we'll see you around. Yeah, cool. Stay on the line because we'll talk about the Maris East Coast game coming up as well. So the next yeah, game sorry. from last week is uh, East Coast versus Martinborough. Um, uh, a big upset here, but Charles, you did pick this one. Uh, a coast went over Marty at a coast. Um, do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah. And welcome to the show, uh, Dion Rat Mitchell. Welcome, Mitch. How are you? Hey boys. hey boys, how are you, mate? Good. Yeah, Mitch. Um, that that's a, a huge result first up for Coast, and, and no surprise to me after beating Greytown in a pre-season game. Uh, I really like what I saw in that game, and you've obviously carried that on through to the the opening round. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. To be fair, we um, we only got in front in the last five minutes, so it was a hell of a battle. Um, very nerve wracking for a lot of our supporters and the coaching staff. But um, I guess we we actually have to thank Greytown for the for the intense hit out we had the week before to set us up with that um, mindset of uh, going the distance. And you're gonna any team's gonna have to have that against um, any team's gonna have to have that against uh, Martinborough for sure. Yeah. And, and just what's happening out there at Coast? I know you know looking at the numbers against us, it, it seemed really strong. And you've got some depth there in the tight five in the front row, which has sometimes been an issue. So tell us a bit more about what's happening out at the club. Um, I guess the two main ingredients this year for um, the numbers and that that we've got out there is probably um, down to two people, really. Um, firstly, um, Lisa Wyeth and the foods that uh, the food that she cooks on a Thursday night is just next <laughs> level. Um, when we were back in the day playing, we were sort of fed on wild pork and stuff that was resembled uh, a bit of roadkill. So, um, <laughs> you know, that's just been absolutely fantastic and, the, and the, it just keeps the boys coming back. So that certainly helps. Um, Have you gone vegan the other, out there or something? What's that? Have you gone vegan out there? <laughs> and um, the uh, the other ingredient, I guess, is um, Jack Wakeling. Um, you know, you could uh, compare him to a uh, Izuzu D-Max because he seems to have a lot of pulling power. <laughs> <laughs> and a crooked leg. Yeah. Now, Rat, who are some of the players to watch out for this season, in your opinion, out there at Coast? Players, um, we've had a quite a um, good mix of young guys come in to add to our um, old dogs. So um, certainly in the backs, uh, you know, the obvious is Cam Ravenwood and um, 
uh, he's going to captain our side this year. So um, we've had a real shuffle around in the backs. Um, Guy Percy, Brian Arnold, two good halfbacks, um, along with Cam. So we've we've got a good mix in the backs there. Um, uh, a Fijian flyer, Billy, uh, out on the wing. Uh, he's been a great addition to our, our team. Um, and in the forwards, um, one that's really started to impress is uh, Jack Goddard. Um, he's a real freight freight train. He just he just goes all day. So he's your lot, uh, isn't really he? Exciting to have him and um, uh, Apelli. Um, Apelli, yes. Say no more about Apelli. You can put him anywhere, and he'll he'll give you one hundred and ten percent. Um, and mix that in with the old guys like um, Joe Feast, etc. Um, just feel like we're we've got a better balanced squad than we've had in the past, and certainly got numbers. Well, that's fantastic to see, Rat. We'll bring you back in later on the show with your uh, prediction for the weekend. Uh, but now moving along, introducing Greytown uh, Pioneer, Greytown at home. Christmas came early in Greytown, literally a thirty-eight ten win to Greytown. Childsy, congratulations on your first win as a senior coach. You've been walking around all week with your um, with your uh, feathers out like a peacock. Um, <laughs> now, let me. I'm just going to ask a couple of questions of your players here. I was really impressed with your big prop, your number one. What's his name? Chris Hemi. Chris Hemi played an outstanding game. I thought your number ten and twelve combination was father and son. Yep, um, and they are they they were epic. Um, your right winger, Logan. Or I would love to see come in in the centres a lot more. Um, I know that's a little trick that you've got up your sleeve that you didn't want other clubs to know about, but he is going to try and bring his right winger into the midfield a bit more, boys. And um, I was really impressed with a couple of hits that your centre put on. Oh, this, yeah. Wow. Yeah, there was a hit that was put on one of the uh, Pioneer boys that just reminded me why I shouldn't play um, Premier Rugby anymore. It was a bone crunching well, tackle over the sideline. Uh, Twenty years since you've done yeah. that. So now let's not take anything away from Pioneer. I thought Pioneer were really good here, um, and I've actually picked them next week to beat Cardinal. But uh, I was really impressed with uh, Reese Calkin at first five for Pioneer as well. I thought he had, a, had an outstanding game. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, Pioneer have made some really good changes this season. Uh, they did show a lot of courage in that game. Um, probably lacking a bit of fitness in their tight five, yeah. and once they sort that out, they're going to pose a huge amount of problems for these teams in the competition. Cool. All right, moving on to the next game of the round. Um, and this was Eki versus uh, Gladstone. And I believe Gladstone had a, had a strong win here, bonus point win, 22-8. Do you want to introduce our next uh, speaker in the show, Chelsea? We're well, introducing live from the Ray White Studios here in Masterton is uh, Robbie Chook Anderson. Good morning, Robbie. Good morning. morning, lads. How, How are, are you? Good, 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 mate. Good. Tell yeah. us about the game. Yeah, we're probably a, uh, a run short, to be fair. A lot of us hadn't actually had a, had a game under the belt because we'd missed pre-seasons due to injuries, and it, it showed on uh, showed on Saturday. We just – they put themselves in the right place on the field and put a lot of pressure on us, and we didn't handle it very well. So I think we took a lot of learnings from it, um, and we'll be better this week. But, yeah, we probably just had a run short, to be fair. Yeah, there's a few rumours coming out of the Kahuna Club, but – uh, some of your players missing trainings and missing potential <laughs> games. So three star players, to, to be uh, precise, Sam Gammy, uh, Johan Van Vliet and BJ Campbell. Now, some various reasons, and I'd just like you to clarify whether these are true or not. Sam Gammy missing Thursday trainings due to attending antenatal classes. Well, it's a new age. It is, yeah, I'm, I'm not criticising that at all. I'm just asking him whether this is true. Uh, Johan Van Vliet, uh, apparently a, a big Queenstown trip he took with his girlfriend. Uh, Rumour has it he may have proposed. And wow. uh, BJ Campbell's been uh, spending all his time on FaceTime with the uh, the local Melbourne DJ there, uh, his partner. So, is there any truth to these rumours? Yeah, well, the boys are they are going through a few lifestyle changes at the moment. It's normally uh, the sheep got out or the cows got out up at Ikatahuna, but now it's all to do with women. So, things are changing up there. Gammy's expecting a baby in two or three weeks, so he's uh, spending more time doing the, the prenatal stuff. Um, Johan, he missed the game in the weekend for a a uh, romantic trip down to Queenstown. There are rumours flying about that he may have dropped a knee, but we're yet to see him, so we're yet to have confirmation of that. He is playing tomorrow, but yet to train. And BJ, he's yeah, he's doing it tough at the moment. He's uh, dating a, a, a well-known DJ over in Melbourne, and due to the COVID restrictions, uh, can't see us. So he's spending Thursday nights on FaceTime as opposed to training. So, yep, it is having an effect on the community team. <laughs> so, yeah. 
tomorrow then <laughs> or today sorry correction uh now we need to move along here and uh yep. thanks chuck we'll get you back in we'll just go through yeah. the senior reserve position now with the scores from last week east coast 33 gladstone 20 ekarahuna 13 pioneer 12 a close game there Carterton a 28 nil victory over featherston uh, Greytown 57 5 victors over Martinborough Good and Big Win and Pukatoi, who are very strong this season in that grade um, by all accounts. Uh, 31 21 victors over Marist, who have a very large squad. So Good to see Pukatoi up and running and doing well. Oh, what are the games for this weekend, Jodzi? Well, it's going to be a huge day at Pioneer. Pioneer are taking on East Coast in, in the reserves. Uh, Marist versus Ekatahuna. Pukatoi take on Carterton. Featherston are playing Martinborough. And Gladstone take on Greytown out of Gladstone. Yeah, I've got some breaking news from that Gladstone side as well. Mark Soper's moved from blindside flanker out to the right wing. Um, if it doesn't work out here for him, I think he's back to the kitchen at the White Swan being a chef, and that's what he's good at. <laughs> Charles, he's just busting up the whole set here at the moment. <laughs> well, I'm back. He's back. Sorry, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Moose Carpenter Cup, the round for this, the, the games for this week. Um, first of all, I just want to show you the table. You might not be able to see it through here, but go to the Wiper Bush website. But the interesting thing from this weekend is all four sides that had a victory this week will play each other, and all the four sides that lost will play each other. So what we're going to see at the end of this round is, is a large separation on the table. Um, our match of the round is the top of the table clash to start with, and that is Gladstone versus Greytown in, in Gladstone. Um, Charlesy, your pick on this one? No well, surprises. Clearly, clearly Greytown. All right. Well, I've got well, Glad we're going in as underdogs. So I'll, I'll add that. All yeah, right. Well, I've got bit. Gladstone for this one as well. Um, and then the other rounds for the uh, for the weekend for today, we've got Marist versus East Coast. Um, Rat, any any thing to add on this one? Yeah, awesome family I think we've, and yeah. um, we're looking to go and um, retain that this um, this weekend. But I think Marist are the obvious favourites in this in this round um, in this game. Oh, talking it down. Um, what was that? Talking it down, are you? Well, I think they're the obvious favourites. Um, if you um, eating your fish and chips out of Monday night's paper, you'd agree with me. So um, I think. It, <laughs> I think I'll go for the upset, though, and I think it'll be a bit closer than you think. I think it'll be, I don't know, coast by 20. Yeah, <laughs> OK, coast by 20. Hey, I think it's going to be a great day out there. It's always a good day when coast comes to Maris as well. So, good G, any, how's the preparation for Maris been this week? Yeah, it's been really good. Thanks, Pisco. Um, I think um, if we can contain a few of their key players and uh, keep them under control, you know, like uh, the likes of uh, Apelli, you know, the human spider there, you know, I mean, what position does, what is he playing, you know, he, he could, he turns up everywhere and anywhere, so he's a real danger there, so if we can sort of keep him under control, and um, maybe their new first five, uh, we might, we might do okay, so I'm, I'm backing us, of course, um, yeah, it's going to be a real tight one, and it'd be good to get one over Mitchy. Yeah, cool, yeah, I've got Maris by 20 on this one as well, well so, I'm taking coast, by the way. and you've got coast. All right, so the next game around Pioneer versus Carterton. Now, I'm tipping Pioneer on this one. I'm I thought Pioneer as well. You're tipping Pioneer, paper, paper, scissors, rock. Ah, damn it. I'm tipping Carterton on this one. Um, after coming up close against Maris last week, I think they've got the goods to come up with this one. So, it's going to be a huge day at Gene Street. Um, it's going to be a massive crowd. Uh, first game back, a home game for Pioneer with the, the seniors and the reserves here. So, it's going to be difficult for Carter and I'm picking Pioneer all the way. Cool. And then Marty at home, Marty's first home game of the season. They're always a rowdy bunch out there trying to correct the referee and do whatever from the sideline. But um, uh, just on this one, Chuck, how have you guys prepared? Uh, Marty, big game at home this week and obviously a must win for you early on. Yeah, we've, uh, well, we've prepared how we can. Without those boys there chasing women, it's been a little bit difficult, but they're all uh, they're all showing up tomorrow. So if they watch this this morning, then they might uh, they might be fueled and um, be ripping into it. So, yeah, I mean, we've prepared as best as we can, but we'll wait and see. Marty are a tough type, well, tough side to beat at home. Yeah, cool. Should be a good game. Um, I have Marty to I'm win this one. Nicky, of course. All right, cool. Hey, now, Charles, he's going to wrap things up with college rugby, I believe. Well, so we're just, we're just running out of time here, so I think we'll um, we'll do a big wrap at the start of next week's show on college yeah, rugby. Cool. Uh, I feel we need to place some time into that rather than rushing yep. through it. So, yep, cool. Um, but yeah, it's, hey, um, thanks everyone for being on the show. Thanks, boys. You got a big day ahead of us today. Um, me and Goodie will probably just head down to Maris and watch the coast game from the sideline. But uh, tune in next week, and don't forget to pick up your Mark Childs. 
signature triple chin face mask on the streets of Greytown. See you next week. Thanks for listening.